The next method that we will be discussing is the Colliston Agar Dilution Method. The only requirement for this method will be a Colliston Agar plate, which we will be preparing by using a Colliston stock preparation and a working solution. The first thing that we will be looking at is the preparation of the Colliston stock which can be prepared and allocated stored after preparation at minus 80 degree Celsius. So now we are looking at the colistin stock solution preparation for this. We dissolve 10 mg of colistin sulfate salt in 6333 microliter of sterile distilled water. So now we are adding the colistin sulfate salt 10 mg. into sterile distilled water which is taken in a tarsen tube. Shake very well till the salt dissolves in the water. Take 4 tubes of 10 ml sterile water in tubes labeled as growth control 1 microgram per ml, 2 microgram per ml and 4 microgram per ml. From the 1 microgram per ml tube Remove 100 microliter of sterile water. From the 2 microgram per ml tube, remove 200 microliter of water. And finally, from the 4 microgram per ml tube, remove 400 microliter of water water now that we have removed some amount of water we will just replace it with the colistin stock solution so take 100 microliter and add it back into the 1 microgram per ml tube same way take 200 microliter of colistin stock solution and replace the same 200 microliter which you have withdrawn from the 2 microgram per ml tube so that the total volume is coming back to 10 ml and finally take 400 microliter of the colistin stock solution and add it into the 4 microgram per ml tube. Shake all the tubes well so that the colistin stock solution which we prepared first has thoroughly mixed with the sterile water that you have taken. So now the growth control will not contain colistin whereas the other tubes will contain colistin in different concentrations. After this, we are ready to prepare the colistin agar plates. So first, prepare 500 ml of Müller-Hinton agar and then take 4 sterile McCartney bottles or small beakers and label accordingly. As growth control, 1 microgram, 2 microgram and 4 microgram. Add 90 ml of Müller-Hinton agar which you have prepared into all the tubes. Or bottles. Then we take the working solution and add or empty the contents of the tubes containing the working solution into these bottles which have the 90 ml of the Muller Inten Agar. So 10 ml of the working solution into bottles 2, 3 and 4. The first bottle we will just add sterile saline. Mix well the McCartney bottles and pour it into plates. So finally you will have 4 plates, 1 for the growth control, 1 for the 1 microgram per ml, 
2 microgram and 4 microgram. Now let us prepare the dilution. So take inoculum which is as usual prepared from 3 to 4 sterile uh, you know uh, subcultured pure colonies and then we prepare a 1 in 10 dilution from the inoculum. So if you are testing one isolate you will have one inoculum and if you are testing multiple isolates as I said about uh, up to 10 isolates can be tested using the cholestin agar plate. So you have to prepare a separate inoculum uh, and dilute it for each. So these are the plates which we are going to use and we have divided it according to the number of isolates. Just take a 10 microliter uh, size loop and streak it corresponding to the isolate number. So this is isolate 1. So you have to take a loop full and streak onto each of the colistin agar plate. Growth control plate. Now we streaked 1 microgram per ml plate. We are taking a loop full again and streaking on the 2 microgram per ml plate. Finally, streak the inoculum in the 4 microgram per ml plate. And do not forget to subculture for sterility check onto a blood agar plate to check the purity of the isolate. After inoculating the plates and the sterility plate, we have to incubate overnight at 37 degrees Celsius for 16 hours. Now we can interpret the results. First interpret the sterility plate. So the isolate is pure. You can see that the growth control has the growth of all four isolates. The first isolate is Estrecia coli which has not grown in the 1 microgram per ml plate. So the MIC value is 1 or less than equal to 1 microgram per ml. The second isolate and the third isolate are Klebschel pneumoniae. So we can see that the second isolate has failed to grow in the 2 microgram per ml plate. So the MIC is 2 microgram per ml. Whereas the third isolate has not grown in the 1 microgram plate. So the MIC value there will be 1 microgram per ml. The last isolate which is Pseudomonas aeruginosa has grown in all the plates. So the MIC will be more than 4 microgram per ml which is resistant.